Yeah. Let's. Would you guys hate me if I rewound for two seconds? No. Just super quick plow through of this. All right. So so really quick. Here's what we did. We did Newton's third law, right? It's for reaction equal and opposite reaction. Super important that you identify the two objects, right? What's being pushed? What's being pulled? Everybody okay with that? All right. So like I said, most examples are pretty straightforward. Um, if you've got you know Carl pushing a box, the two objects are Carl and the box. This is silly. I'll just explain it to them when I, when I see them. <laughs> I want to repeat the same thing to you guys. All right. If you're just tuning in, I'm sorry. I forgot to record again. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. So here we go. Here's the law. Um, so um, are we good with the action reaction thing? In that example, Hacker pushed to the desk. That was our reaction. I'm sorry. That was our action. The reaction was the desk pushes me. All right. So a couple of quick things about this. Um, first of all, um, Oh, well, this is just another word of the same thing. So anytime object A pushes or pulls object B, object B is going to push or pull object A with an equal amount of force in the opposite direction. So that's why we say the action and reaction are equal and opposite. Good? All right, a couple important things that you need to know about the third law. First of all, if your action is A pushes B, then the reaction is B pushes A, right? And the only thing you do is you change your direction, right? Oh, no, I fixed it on that. Oh, yeah, just got a spot up the left. Okay. So, um, now, the way the book denotes this is totally backwards from the way that I've always done it. So, I'm going to mix this up occasionally. Correct me if I do. All right? So, the force of object A pushing object B. Object A pushing object B is written this way, which is like backwards from the way that I would think of it. Okay, but the way that you should think of it is it's the force provided by B on object A. Okay, so usually when like usually I do force of Roy, that means the force exerted by Roy. All right, and then the second subscript is just being a little bit more clear and telling you what's being pushed or pulled. Cool. A, oh, you're right. So I, what I just said was 100% wrong. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. So anyway, this means. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Two thirty eleven four. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you're, I, I, I misspoke. I apologize. Yes. So regardless, though, it's backwards from the way that I always want it to be. Um, so this is object B being pushed by object A. Are we good? Everybody happy? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So in general, the idea is if your action is A pushing B, then your reaction is B pushing A. And so in shorthand, there's the third law. Okay, for any two objects A and B, those forces are always going to be equal and opposite. Good? All right, now, important things to be aware of. If the action is a push, so is the reaction. All right, if I push the desk, then the desk pushes me. Okay? Similarly, if I pull the desk, the desk pulls me, right? Cool? Um, next, the action and reaction occur simultaneously. Okay, it's not like cause and effect. It's not like I push Patrick and then he punches me. Okay, <laughs> it's, they occur simultaneously. All right. So the idea is, as long as my hand is in contact pushing the desk, there's a reaction of the desk pushing me, and they occur during the same time interval. Like if you were to watch it in slow motion, it would be right push. So the entire time that I'm pushing the desk, it's pushing me. And so for that reason, it doesn't really matter which one you call the action and which one you call the reaction, okay? Because they're occurring at the same time. Cool? So very often there's one force that just sort of, for whatever reason, intuitively feels like it should be the action, but it doesn't really matter, okay? So in this Hecker pushing the desk example, it makes sense to think action, Hecker pushes desk, reaction, desk pushes Hecker, but that's totally arbitrary. And you could flip it around. You could say the action is the heck, the desk pushed me, and the reaction was that I pushed it. Yes. Wait, so does it, it doesn't necessarily like 
have to be the way it's described in black then? Uh, like, which one is the action and reaction doesn't have to be that way. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that was what I was about to say. The notation has to be that way. Good or no? Yeah. I don't know if I believe you. Let me do it. We'll do a couple examples, and I think that'll clarify things. All right. So let's do a couple examples, which is, I think, the next page. Yeah. Okay. So, so here's those same examples again. I think I added in a couple of them. But here's those same examples again. Let's identify the action and reaction force. All right. So again, they're interchangeable. So which one you call the action and which one you call the reaction is sort of insignificant. But how you word them is important. Okay. So to do this, you need to make sure that you identify one object pushing or pulling another object, excuse me, and give me a direction. So my action here might be Carl pushes box. Which way do you want to push it? To the right. <laughs> cool. So notice there are four pieces of information there, right? Your reaction needs to contain those same four pieces of information, but rearranged a little bit. So instead of Carl pushing the box, it's box pushes Carl. Which way? Left. All right, everybody good? So I don't know that we need to write all of these down, but let's at least run through them real quick. So table prevents a box from falling. So who can give me one possibility for the action, knowing that there are two? Sure, yeah, yeah. So box is pushing down the table. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you've got a box sitting on a table, the box is going to push the table down. I probably, just the way I process it, probably would have thought of that as the reaction, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, what's, if, so if the action is box pushing the table down, the reaction is... The table pushes the box up, right? Good. Okay. Um, ceiling in the helium balloon is kind of the same thing, right? Okay, ball falling off the roof. This one always sounds weird. So what did we decide the two objects were? The ball and earth, right? So my action is going to be, so here's the ball. Here's the earth. The earth is pulling the ball down, right? So here's the force of the earth acting on the ball, right? So my action would be the force oops, of the earth pulls the ball, which way? Down. And again, the reaction sounds a little bit weird, but it's correct. What is it? The ball pulls the earth up, right? Follow? Yeah. All right. So why don't we notice this? When I drop this pen, we don't go, oh my god, the earth! Rush him up, right? Why not? With the magnitude of what is so small? Uh, the ball the Say that again. Uh, not really. So let me pause you for a minute. Sorry, the mass of the Okay, yeah. So these two forces are equal, you guys. The pen is being pulled down with exactly as much force as the earth is being pulled up. Right? Newton's third law says the forces are equal and opposite. So if this pen weighs 10 newtons, which it doesn't, but if it weighed 10 newtons, then there's 10 newtons worth of gravitational force pulling it down. We also have 10 newtons of gravitational force pulling the Earth up. But the Earth is freaking huge, right? It's ginormous. So imagine a rope tied to the ground, and you're like, oh, 10 newtons. And you pull out the rope, you're not going to move the Earth, right? This is really big. All right? Uh, no, because there's a normal force and you pulling, they all actually end up canceling out. They're all internal. Let me come back to that in one second. Oh, that sucks. Uh, so look, you guys. So here's my ball, right? So maybe it weighs, whatever, 10 newtons, right? Here's the earth. The ball is pulling the earth up with 10 newtons. Look, the acceleration that that would produce would be the net force on the Earth divided by its mass. Well, your net force is 10 newtons. I don't know why I'm writing this out. The mass of the Earth is gigundous. It's 598 with 22 zeros after it. So pretend that's 22 zeros. So the acceleration is going to be teeny, 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 teeny. But technically speaking, I just moved the Earth. Right? Because the Earth did accelerate up towards the pen, 
a teeny, 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 22 teenies bit, right? Yes. Who's that Chuck Norris joke? That's the best. Chuck Norris does do push-ups. He does earth pulls. Nice. Nice. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Bad joke recorded first. Okay. Are we good? All right. So this is a classic question. It's on every first year physics final in the universe. Well, maybe not. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Okay. So, um, um, well, bug is flying along and gets hit by a Mack truck. Is there more force on the bug or the truck? They're equal. They are equal. Which one has the bigger acceleration, though? The bug. The bug does, but he has a smaller mass, right? It's actually not that much force. It's really a very small amount of force. If a bug is crawling across your paper and you flick it, the amount of force you're putting on the bug there is not that much less than the force of the truck. Because in both cases, the bug is going from zero to, you know, whatever, 40 miles an hour very, very quickly. Okay? All right, are we good? All right. Um, okay, so let's just kind of run through these. Baseball player slides to a stop, so the two objects of the baseball player and the ground. So the action would be the player pushes the ground forward, the direction he's moving, right? And then the ground pushes the player backwards, which is what stops him, right? Clear? All right, when you walk, what are you doing? Pushing the ground backwards, right? Right, you're using friction, right? That's why they make shoes rubber. So they grip the ground, right? So you push the ground backwards, the ground pushes you forwards. Okay? When you jump, what are you doing? Pushing the earth down and the earth pushes you up. Okay? Questions? All right, so that's the third law. Um, please, please, please make sure you understand that those forces are always equal. All right? Um, I don't know if we have to run through this example. Do you guys understand that that if you have two different, oh, you know what, I do need to talk about one other thing. So I do want to run through this example to point out one thing that's important. Yeah, Ethan. Theoretically, if you went to one side of the planet, uh -huh. that was a million times. Uh, yes, but still, it's such a small amount that you would never notice it. If you did, like, what if, like, we were in danger of like, the sun? I don't. I have to sit down and do some quick calculating. I don't think it matters though because we don't have enough force to be like the sun's gravitational pull, right? Right. No, no, no. You certainly, certainly not. I see what you're saying. But if you did it repeatedly. What's that? <laughs> right. I think that's right. Um, but so it, I mean, it, the numbers are ridiculous though, because even the population of the Earth is what, like eight billion now? Yeah. So eight, that's nine zeros, right? I think a billion, right? Just up that one. What's that? Compared to twenty-two zeros. So it's still, you know, you'd have to jump a lot of times for that to make any significance. Okay, so anyway, so let's do this real quick. I'm going to kind of plow through this, but we got two people standing on frictionless skateboards and they push each other. So, so here's Roy. Here's Sally. All right, I'm just... Okay, so uh, the mass of Roy is 80 kilograms. Sally's 60 kilograms. Uh, it says Sally pushes Roy. So here's the force of Sally. Uh, negative 960 newtons. Reaction is going to be that Roy pushes her. 960 newtons. Obviously, there's gravity and normal force that I'm skipping here just in the interest of time. All right. So if we find their accelerations, the acceleration of Roy would be his net force, negative 960, divided by his mass, 80 kilograms. And so you get negative, what, 12 meters a second squared, I think. Is that right? Yes. If you find the acceleration of Sally, it's net force over mass. So 960 newtons divided by 60 kilograms gives you 16 meters a second squared. So they both move, right? You guys have seen demos that kind of show them, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Here's the big question that always messes people up. Every year I get people asking me this. Why don't these two forces cancel and prevent all motion? 
right? Look, we got 960 newtons here, 960 newtons here. Why doesn't that make a net force of zero? Yeah, they, these forces are acting on different objects, right? If you look at Sally, there's only one force on her, right? And the only way we could cancel that out is if we had another force acting on Sally, like friction or, you know, some other person was pushing. Exactly. All right? So these forces do not cancel because they act on different objects. Are we good with that? Okay. Um, all right. This, yeah, so we just talked about that. Forces don't cancel because they act on different objects. You can write that down. Um, how would the, those free body diagrams be different if there's friction? Well, we just alluded to that, right? If there's friction, then the friction would counteract, you know, the forces from the people, and they, you know, may or may not move, right? Cool? Yeah. Everybody happy? Too fast? Too slow? We good? Cool. All right. Um, all right. So let's apply it. So all of the free body diagrams that we have done so far have been for kind of one object. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start dealing with what are called systems of objects and making free body diagrams for them. All right. So here you can see, just without even reading the problem, you can see we've got these two boxes, right? And what's going to happen if I remember right? Yeah, box A is going to get pushed to the right. Okay. We're on a frictionless surface, so they're both going to move, right? Okay, so there are three different ways you can think of this problem. You can think of it in terms of the box A and B system, the system of both boxes. Or you can think about what's happening just to A, or you can think about what's happening just to B. Okay? So, this is a, like, the questions very similar to this on your 5-3 on your, uh, homework. Okay? Um, eventually, it'll get more complicated. We'll throw friction in and stuff. But this is kind of, you know, bare bones system of equations or system of object problem. All right, so here we go. So there's two boxes sit on a horizontal frictionless surface, as shown in the drawings. Box A has a mass of 25 kilograms. Box B, let's label this M A. Box B has a mass of 50 kilograms. And then it says box A is pushed to the right with a force of 300 newtons. And we're trying to find the acceleration of the two boxes. Well, if you push A and A moves, then B is going to move too, right? So at this point, it might make sense to consider them as, as one object, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the system. So if we look at the system, instead of thinking about them as A and B separately, we're going to kind of consider it as one big box. So here's mass A and B. So that's going to be 75 kilograms, right? Follow? All right, now, what forces are acting on it? What forces are acting on the system? Well, when you make your free body diagram, you always start with gravity. So 75 times 9.8 gives you negative, is it 735? Uh, where are my notes? I don't remember what 75 times 9.8 is. And they, I think you do that on the multiple choice part of the test, but I don't want to. Okay, it is. Thank you. Right, so it's 735 newtons. There's going to be a normal force, also 735 newtons, right? So technically, I guess, you know, we didn't have to draw those, but it's always good to be thorough. Um, all right, and then we've got this force pushing it. So here's our force, you know, whoever pushing it, 300 newtons, right? Are there any other forces affecting the system? No. If there was friction, we'd have to consider that. Okay, there are two internal forces. There's the force of A pushing B and the force of B pushing A. But remember, only external forces can affect the motion of the system, right? You can't sit in your car and push on the dash dashboard and expect it to go, right? you got to get outside of the car and push it, right? Same idea. Yeah. All right, so let's find the acceleration. So the acceleration for the system is the net force of the system divided by the mass of the system. So that's 300 newtons divided by 75 kilograms, and you get 4 meters a second squared. Everybody good up to that? Have you guys seen problems like this? Yeah. yeah. Yes? Okay. Some honors classes do this kind of stuff, some don't. I wasn't sure if you guys had done it before or not. Do, 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 do. All right, so, oh no. 
All right, so that's question A. Find the acceleration of the two boxes. We got four meters a second squared. Is everybody okay with that? All right, now, so question? Is that adding up the two boxes together or adding the acceleration of the two different boxes? Well, they're the same. Because if you push A, A is going to move, right? Um, but, I mean, they're going to just kind of move together, you know, because A is going to be pushing B forward. Because it's frictionless, yeah. You good or no? Everybody good? Okay, cool. All right, so now it says, how much forces do the two boxes exert on each other? And then it says, verify your answer. Okay, we're going to check Newton's third law here and see if it works. All right, so let's do this. Let's, for a minute, let's consider box B. We'll do this in red. All right, so here's box B. So the mass of B is uh, 50 kilograms. All right, there's going to be a gravitational force of negative 490. There's going to be a normal force of positive 490. Now, what makes box B move? Box A, right? That 300 newtons is not touching box B, right? Okay, something is pushing box A. Maybe it's Roy, right? So the two objects there would be Roy and box A. But Roy isn't pushing box B. He's pushing box A, right? So which, what's pushing box B is the force of A, right? Cool? All right, so we need to figure out how much force that is. So thoughts? What else do we know about box B? Yes. We know the acceleration. The acceleration of this box is 4 meters a second squared, right? Because it's the same as the system from before. So they're both moving together, right? So now I can find my net force by just doing mass times acceleration, and you get 200 newtons, right? Patrick, you good? Oh, okay. Sorry. You good. All right. Everybody good? All right. Cool. So... What does the force of A have to be? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just 200. Look, these forces cancel out, right? The net force on our box is 200. The only uncanceled force is force of A. That's got to be the 200 newtons, right? So that represents the force of object A pushing object B. The 300 new, well, hold on, let me, let me do box A and then I'll show you where the 300 newtons is, okay? So is everybody okay with box B? Maybe I should have started with box A. Everybody good? All right. All right, so finally, box A. So here's our box A. There's a gravity force, gravitational force, and a normal force. I think they're 245. Whatever, I'm not going to worry about them right now. Um, this has a mass of 25 kilograms. All right, so remember, you guys, when you do a free body diagram, I told you to always start with your force of gravity and your mass. Um, your normal force should be the last vertical salt, vertical force you deal with. So the normal force here has to be 245. Good. Um, what other forces are acting on it? We always start with forces that are given. What forces are given to us? The 300 newtons from, let's say that it's Roy, just so we have a name for it. So here's our force of Roy, 300 newtons. Notice, again, that 300 newtons is applied to box A, not to box B. That's why the 300 newtons doesn't show up over here. Follow? All right, now, if box A, let me finish my train of thought, and I'll get to Marcus. So if box A was by itself, this would be it, right? And the box would accelerate very quickly, right? Because you'd have a net force of 300 acting on 25 kilograms. You'd get an acceleration of, I think, 12 meters per second squared. But it doesn't accelerate that quickly. Why not? Sure, again. Because B is in the way. Right? So when the two boxes hit each other, A has to push B. And the reaction is B pushes A backwards. So there's another force here, specifically the force of B pushing A backwards. Follow? What do you got? 
So our goal is hopefully it'll be 200 newtons because that's what Newton's third law says, right? Right? Every force has an equal and opposite reaction. So if A is pushing B with 200 newtons, then hopefully B is pushing A with 200 newtons. Let's check it out. So let's find the net force on box A. To do that, I know the acceleration is 4 meters a second squared, so I can find the net force, right? So the net force is going to be the mass, 25 kilograms, times the acceleration, 4 meters a second squared. That's going to give me 100 newtons, right? So now I'm saying, now i got to figure out what the force of B was. Well, 300 newtons plus the force of B has got to equal 100, because that's our net force, right? So what does force of B have to be? Sort of 200, but more specifically, negative 200, right? Equal and opposite. Both the force of A pushing B and the force of B pushing A are 200. Just one of them is negative because it's in the opposite direction. Helps. I'm having trouble understanding why the force of the force of B is equal Say that one more time. Why, why does the system have like 300 newtons applied to it when, or why, like, never mind. No, it's a good question. Let me, let's. Here's box B, here's box A, right? Okay, so let's pretend that it's frictionless. Okay, can everybody see it? It's going to be the best demo of the year. So prepare yourself. We're going to push some Kleenex boxes. It's going to be amazing. All right. So if I was to push just box A, it's going to move really fast, right? Yeah. Right? Just well, it moves pretty quickly, right? But if I put box B here and I push it with about the same amount of force, it didn't move as much, right? Okay. I, I tried to more or less push with the same force, but we got less motion out of it. That's because my 300 newtons that I'm pushing isn't just moving box A. It's moving box A and box B. Good? All right. So this is the blue drawing. There's 300 newtons of me pushing both boxes. Get up to there. All right. Now, let's look at just box A. Why did box A, when I do this, how come this box moves slower than it does now without box B there? He is pushing back at it, right? So this drawing represents me pushing the Kleenex box. But box B resisting its motion. Correct. Um, so, uh, how do I want to say this? I guess why wouldn't it be? I guess I don't understand where you're getting, I don't mean that in a way, but I don't understand where you're getting tangled up. There's, there's 300, there's an external force of 300 newtons out of the system, right? Now, it happens that it is specifically being applied just to box A. So some of this 300 newtons is used to move the 25 kilograms, but you sort of lose 200 of those newtons to move the other ob object. That's how we want to say it. Yeah. It's a little sloppy because you're not technically losing force, but you can kind of think of it that way, right? Look, this one has twice as much mass, so it gets twice as much of the 300 newtons. Right? This sort of only needs 100 newtons total to move, okay. and it sort of gives the extra 200 newtons to the other box. Okay, so B moves to the right, and then A But let me pause you for two seconds. What's pushing B to the right? A. Do you understand that? Yeah. Not the 300 newtons. Yeah. Okay. He's just confused with the number, like where did 200 come? Gotcha. And I guess you can kind of think of it as it's a little sloppy, but you can sort of think of the force as being some of it's used by box A and some of it's used by box B. And since it has twice as much mass, it needs twice as much force to get the same acceleration. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that help you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. So to get the system moving as fast as you would with just applying three minutes to box A, you have to apply double the force. I think triple, because you've got triple the max, right? So you're going from 25 kilograms oh, yeah. up okay. to 75. Okay. But that's a great question. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing. Okay. It's, it's not what we're doing, but yes. That's, it's definitely negative. All right. Are we good? Questions with it? All right. So 
think we have just enough time to do this. All right. So this thing here is it's what's called an Atwood machine, or Atwood's machine sometimes. All right. Um, and we are going to be next chapter doing a lab that deals with a variation on this idea. Okay. Um, I haven't figured out exactly how the lab is going to work, but it'll be pulleys and weights and two things being connected by rope. Okay. So we got two masses in the figure at the right. They're initially at rest, and they're 1.8 meters above the ground. So that's probably worth writing down. So let's do that. So the velocity of, oh, stupid green. So the velocity of A initially is zero. The velocity of B initially is zero. Both of them start out at a vertical position. How do we want to write this? Uh, y naught is 1.8 meters. Cool? Y is in vertical position. Everybody cool with that? All right. Um, we're given the mass of A and we're given the mass of B. And we've got to find the tension in the rope. B says how long will it take box B to hit the ground, and then C says what's the maximum height it will reach. All right, so it's it's actually a very similar problem to the one that we just did, except this time, instead of having Roy pushing the system, we've got gravity pushing the system. We're pulling, I guess, technically, right? Um, so which one of these two boxes is going to be more affected by gravity? B is, right? So it's going to go, B is going to go down, A is going to go up, right? Okay, but B isn't in free fall, right? Because it's being sort of held up by the rope, right? And that same rope that's sort of holding B up is pulling A upward, right? All right, so in general, when you have these sort of systems of objects, you want to start by looking at the whole system, all right? And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So here's the pulley, and then I, <laughs> this is going to be silly. I know you guys are going to laugh. Uh, I always draw this sort of like amorphous blob. That sort of just represents, there's my system. Okay? So, what's pulling the blob this way? The force of gravity on box B. So we should figure out what that force is. Notice, that's an external force, isn't it? Because where is that force coming from? Outside the system, more specific. From the Earth, the Earth's gravity. And the Earth is not part of the system that I drew, right? My amorphous blob represents the two boxes and the rope, which is massless and stretchless. Unstretchable, I guess, right? So um, I can certainly find that force of gravity. It's going to be 3.5 times 9.8. So it's 34.3 uh, newtons. I'm not going to make it negative, and I'll explain why in just a second. All right, so is everybody good up to there? Yeah. All right. Over here, we've got the force of gravity on block A, right? Gravity is pulling block A down at the same time as it's pulling B down. But that's only going to be 24.5 newtons, right? Because less mass. Good? Yep. All right, is everybody good? All right, now, um, are there any other... Please excuse this interruption. This is about the uh, football game tonight um, against North. For all students, the student section, it is a blue bash. So wear. Okay, so is everybody good with that? Yeah. All right. So look, there are two possible directions that our system can go. It can either go this way, oops, it can either go this way or it can go this way, right? Let's call one of those positive and one of them negative. Which one do we want to be positive? The one on the right, because that's the way it's going to go, and then we're going to feel negative, right? So we're going to make this guy positive, this guy negative, which means that this force of gravity for us is going to be positive, this one's going to be negative. Follow? What's the mass of the whole system? A plus B, so 2.5 plus 3.5, that's 6 kilograms. Follow? All right, so for the whole system, the acceleration is going to be the net force divided by the mass. So our net force is going to be 34.3 plus negative 24.5 newtons all over 6 kilograms. Follow? Yeah. Ordinarily, I would find the net force separately, but whatever. So uh, you end up getting a net force of 9.8 newtons, 
divided by six kilograms. And you get an acceleration of some number that I've written on this piece of paper. Is that a coincidence that 9.8? Uh, it's because the difference in masses is one kilogram. So one times 9.8. Um, and so you end up getting 1.63 meters per second squared. Is that right? Okay. Um, I can't be repeating. There's no way that's right. Okay. All right. So um, we are going to run out of time. So um, here's what I want you guys to do. Here's your your like. I'm not going to actually. I, you guys were supposed to have 5.3 due on what would it be Tuesday? Put that on. Put the brakes on that. Um, oh shoot. No. Let's still make that due Wednesday because you guys have an extra day. So that'll that'll be due Wednesday still. But here's what I want you to do for. Tonight, see if you can get this done for Monday. See if you can find the tension in the rope. All right. To do that, all you're going to do is make a free body diagram for block B or block A. You already know it's acceleration. You know the force of gravity. The only thing you're missing is that tension force. All right. See if you can figure it out. We'll go over it on at the start of the hour Monday. All right. Good. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I won't check it. I would do it. You'll be better prepared. So, uh, let's see. 5-1-B was due today. So, 5-2 is due Monday. 5-3-A is due Wednesday. And it's all on my website if you get mixed up. Uh, if, hang on two seconds. Let me do this real quick. Um, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You said that.